Learning AI is kind of like a video game. Well, not exactly the same, but hear me out. So all of a sudden, AI is everywhere. AI, 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 AI. Artificial intelligence. Now, I'm not a big gamer. The last time I seriously played was StarCraft back in college. And I played a little bit of Zelda during COVID. Now, I had been a software engineer for two decades. And in this field, you're always learning. And if you're looking for a technical AI roadmap, I've made other videos about that. So go watch that if you're interested. But this one is about the art of learning. Because the more I learn, the more I realize the way we play games, explore, level up, and beat bosses, it's not that different from learning AI. By the end of this video, you'll see how treating AI like a game can make learning faster, more fun, and way more effective. And by the way, a portion of this video is sponsored by Zero to Mastery, but more on them later. Let's say learning AI is like Breath of the Wild. You start the game as Link, just waking up after a hundred year nap. You've got three hearts, no armor, no weapons, and zero stamina. And that is you Link on day one of learning AI. No models, no code, no clue. Your goal is to become a great AI engineer. Someone who can design, build, and ship real-world AI products. That is your final boss, Ganon, but with LLMs. Now here's a twist. The school version of this game looks like an obstacle course. You want to learn AI, you hit gate 1. Memorize calculus formulas. Gate 2, linear algebra. Then maybe you get to gate 3, memorizing data structures and algorithm. After all of that, maybe you get to build a to-do list app that lives only in your environment. And if you're lucky, you're coding in Python. But for me, I started with C. Then lastly, you get to grind leak code. It's a linear, painful process with way too many gatekeepers. And the worst of all is that none of it feels connected to actually building anything real. And this is where most people give up somewhere around gate two. According to statistics, over 10% of computer science students drop out before graduation, and even fewer land jobs in AI. So even if you beat the game and get the CS degree, and somehow you land your first job, you'll quickly realize you have to relearn almost everything all over again. And that was me. But what if we flipped the map? What if your goal wasn't just getting a degree, but something more practical, like build something real with AI, or solve a problem that actually matters? Be able to talk about AI clearly with users or teammates? Now you don't have to collect all the Korok seeds or beat every single shrine to become an AI engineer, as long as you focus on being able to actually ship something. This version of the game is more practical. It is still hard, but hopefully it's more fun. And if you're looking for a more fun, practical way to level up, that's exactly what Zero to Mastery is all about. They focus on hands-on learning, where you build real-world skills in AI and machine learning. And you do this project by project. This is really the best way to learn because you're applying what you're learning in real time. Time. For example, if you want to level up your machine learning skills, their TensorFlow for deep learning or Python developer courses are perfect. And if you're kind of a person who likes a roadmap, they've got a full career path like the complete AI and machine learning engineer roadmap. And don't worry, these courses are great for any skill level even if you've never written a line of code before. But what really sets Zero to Mastery apart is the community. When you join, you get exclusive access to a community over 500,000 students and experts learning together, answering each other's questions, and helping you move faster, especially when you get stuck. So whether you're just starting out or looking to level up, check out the link in the description and get started today. Now let's go back to the game analogy. What does it mean to beat a game? Some people might say it's finishing the main storyline. Others might say you haven't really beaten it until you've found every secret, unlocked all the shrines, and collected all the Korok seeds. Now apply that to AI. Some people say you need a PhD in machine learning. Others may say you need to know the math inside out, vectors, derivatives, and all of that. And then there's the new school of thought. Vibe coding. You don't even need to understand the code anymore. Just prompt the tool until it works. Who cares what happens under the hood? So who's right? Now here's what I think. Maybe there's another way. Maybe being an AI engineer isn't about maxing out theory or vibe coding to the max. I think there's a middle ground. Maybe beating the AI game means being able to build useful things, still with enough understanding to read code, debug, iterate, and even write some code yourself when needed. Does that sound like a cheat code? I don't know. I think of it as redefining the win condition. Back in college, I had to build a linked list in C++ 
from scratch for class. We weren't allowed to use any libraries and students asked why C++ already has built-in lists. But then the professor said, because this is how you learn what's under the hood. And honestly, I see the point. It taught me how data moves, how pointers work, and that foundation still helps me today. But in the real world, you don't always build from scratch you'd be using libraries, tools like APIs, frameworks, SDK, help you code faster. And the catch is that you still need to know enough, enough to spot when the tool's not working correctly, enough to know why it's wrong. Because if you don't know what's happening under the hood, are you using AI or is AI using you? But to get back to the actual learning, if you want to take this balanced approach, what are the gates that actually help you level up? Gate one is basic Python fluency try to code a little bit every day. It can be really exhausting at first. Your brain's working really hard and you're not used to it. It's kind of like going to the gym. It's tough in the beginning, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. Next step is to know what you don't know. You don't need to master all of statistics, calculus, and linear algebra, but you should get a rough map of what each one is for. That way, when you encounter KNN or gradient descent, you'll know exactly which rabbit hole to dive into. And don't forget to make it fun. Behavioral psychology 101 is that your brain learns better when it's having a good time. So tie your learning to something meaningful, maybe a tool that improves your own life, an app that helps a community you care about, or a feature you want to launch for real users. That's how you stay motivated. And bonus, real projects with real users can be a great portfolio piece. Now you still need to get job ready. Nobody gets hired just for learning AI. You'll need a resume, you'll need to interview skills, and you might need to grind some lead code. And you could always look for companies that don't require lead code. And that may limit your options a bit. And I know arguably it is broken, but the current system is what it is. And if you understand how the system works, you can beat it or even bend it. If you need help landing a job, check out the Ultimate Resume Handbook. It's a full guide on writing a great ATS-friendly resume. But if $20 is a stretch for you right now, don't worry. You can download the free template version too, so check out the link in the description. Here's a part nobody talks about. Being a good AI engineer isn't about degrees. It's about being able to connect the dots between tools, users, and real world problems. You don't need to memorize a syntax, a PyTorch, or understand every quirk of transformer models. But you do need to recognize which tools solve which problems, what trade-offs each decision carries, and how to talk to users and stakeholders. And let's get real, there is a lot of elitism in AI right now. If you don't have a PhD, haven't published papers, or didn't go to the right schools, some people might say you're not valid. But here's the thing, most companies don't need tons of AI researchers, but they do need AI engineers, builders, problem solvers, people who can ship products. So if you're starting out on your own AI journey, forget the gatekeepers, pick a project, learn what you need to make it real and repeat it, make it fun, make it yours, and keep leveling up. Now, if you want a roadmap to get started, watch this video and I'll see you there.